All right, today we're talking about two finger rings. Two finger rings have been around forever and they've been used for a bunch of different reasons, mainly to show off your wealth. They also show everybody your financial insecurities on one big ring on your finger. And my personal favorite, they tell everyone who sees them that you have no ability whatsoever to function nicely with other people in a normal society. And maybe that's why I want one. I have those problems as well. Well, ex okay, except for the wealth part, don't have that problem yet. But one day, one day I might get lucky and have that one too. But I really wasn't wanting to tell other people a statement, like you see a lot of those flat ones with words on them. I was thinking something more artistic, something more useful, something more that's my purse! I don't know you! <laughs> Maybe self-defense. Not really though. But it'd be a good byproduct, right? So today we're gonna be carving one out of wax and casting it in silver because I don't have a wealth problem. <laughs> And if you guys want to learn how to carve projects in wax for a pretty minimal investment, keep watching. We'll be going over the tools that you need to do it. All right, let's get to it. So here are some of the tools we're going to be using today. A square, digital calipers, a scribe, that'll be for marking, a bastard file, and this is the wax we're going to be using, matte carving wax. It just comes pre-cut in a bunch of different sizes. And then these are the two tools that are more specific. We have this file. This is the wax car carving tool for the flex shaft. So when I was learning fine jewelry down in Portland, these were two really important tools. And I don't know them by any other name than what I was taught. And I was taught this is a baby and this is a Bertha. And I will leave a link in the description box below for those two. These ones you can get pretty much anywhere, you know, square, calipers, whatever. Um, but these two are really specific. And these are really the main tools for carving wax. And and I get those from John at West Coast Findings. I'll leave a link for his phone number in the description box below. You guys can call him and order him. He knows him as a baby and a Bertha also. So don't feel stupid asking for him. So the first thing we need to do is smooth out our wax and get it an even uniform thickness. The thickness that we're looking for is around 12 millimeters wide for what I'm doing. And we're gonna be using the bastard file for that. All right, now we have this thing smooth on both sides and about 12 millimeters thick. And that's exactly what we're looking to do. Now the next step is we need to start laying out our finger holes in this thing. So I determined my ring finger sizes on a scale. You can check a scale like this out online. It'll basically tell you US ring size and millimeter and inches in diameters and things like that. This one doesn't go up nearly as far as I needed. So I actually had to look online for a larger scale. I determined that I needed to have a 24 and a half millimeter hole on one and then a 23 millimeter hole on another. And so that will give us something to lay out the diameters. And so those diameters we're gonna to use to start laying out the holes in this thing. So what we need to do is mark them on this side and then mark them exactly the same on the other side so that way we can have a guide to cut the hole with. And I always find it helpful, this is a really rough drawing, but I find it really helpful just to write this stuff down so that way I can look at it and then do the math across. So what I need to do is find the center lines of both of these holes. So I wanna have a two and a half millimeter gap on this side, a two millimeter half gap on the bottom, and I want two millimeters in between the two holes. So that is gonna give us a measurement to, to base everything off of. So I'm gonna figure out two and a half here, and then half of 23 will give us the center line right here, and then two and a half millimeters from the bottom, and then half of 23 here will give us a center line there, and that'll give us our point for the center of this hole. And we'll do that on both holes, and then we'll mark them. And I forgot one tool that is really helpful to use is a pair of dividers. So you could obviously do this without the dividers. You could just, you know, find the ring size gauge online, like the holes. They actually have different size holes online. You can just pick them, measure them, and then trace them out if you wanted to. But I find the dividers, you know, obviously is a lot easier to do. So let's do the math and start getting this thing laid out in the wax. All right, so I made my center marks for both of the centers of both both holes. I did the exact same measurement on both sides. So now what we're gonna do, take our dividers and then take our diameter, divide it in half, and then we're gonna basically put them both on there. We're gonna scribe them both on with the dividers. All right, so now we have this perfectly marked on either side. 
in the same spot. So what we need to do now is cut the center out some way. You can use a drill bit, something like that. And then once we have that done, we'll take our Bertha and we'll slowly start to work it out to the outside of this line, really carefully, making sure that we don't overcut. So that's the real key. And when you're cutting on one side, make sure you're paying attention to the other side too, because you could overcut when you're not paying attention to the other side. So let's get going on that. So here's where we have it now. We have both of our holes cut right up to the line, which is awesome. And we'll give it a quick test fit. Seems to be fitting pretty good. I wasn't 100% sure if I wanted it on these first two fingers or the middle two, but I figured it'll work both ways now. I just made it the size of the two larger fingers so that way it worked both ways. So anyway, now we have it like this, I wanna start getting that angled look. So what I'm gonna do is draw my profile on both sides the way I want it. And once I have it drawn, then we'll start to carve out this profile. And then after that's completely drawn, we'll cut that tapered angled look into it second. So the first thing is the side profile. We'll get that thing cut in the way we want it. All right, let's get it marked out. So really when it comes to wax carving, everything comes right down to guidelines. So measure, mark as many lines in this thing as you possibly can, the more the better. And that'll get us the most even look. We don't, we don't want it to look uneven or just haphazard. So tons of measuring, tons of marking. a good start. I think I like the shape that's coming out. So what I'm going to do is cut this top and this side off and start to see a little bit more what's what's there. So the way we're going to cut that off is we're going to go back to the Bertha. So let's cut it down. All right, that's looking about good. I think we have our side profile all cut out. That's pretty much what I was going for. It was uh, basically I wanted to be an asymmetrical ring with a point on one side, and that's exactly what we have. So we did pretty much most all this carving with the baby and the Bertha. These are the two main workhorses of wax carving. And the cool thing about wax carving too is all you really need is some wax and a couple hand tools, really. And you can carve and get all kinds of practice in and just enjoy making jewelry. If you don't have the casting equipment, which is really the expensive part of lost wax casting, you could always just have somebody else cast it for you. So get some wax, draw a design out, and just enjoy yourself, have some fun making jewelry. And then when you get done the way you want it, then you can go take it to the caster and have them cast it for you. So now what we need to do is we need to take this profile and go from this width down to a point on this side. So what I'm gonna do is mark a center line down the entire thing, so that way we no center no matter what we carve and what we do and then we'll carve our two angles in and then start to carve it down. So now we have our side profile all finished and carved out. It looks really good. And so what we need to do now is just do a little bit of detail to it. I think I'm gonna bevel these sides. Maybe I'll cut a hole in between the two fingers right there. That might be good. And then also a thing I noticed, I was trying it on. It works great on those two fingers, but if I wanted to wear it on these two fingers, I have a bit of an issue right here. So I think I'm gonna curl that in to make it a little more comfortable to wear if I wanna wear it on the two middle fingers like that. So that is basically what we're doing. And if I can think of anything else, just to add a little more detail to it, I'll do that. All right, time to get started.
So when I get inside those little tight areas, I'm using this surgical scalpel. It is a really handy little tool, inexpensive, but just super effective on getting like inside details like that. But what do you guys think? Check it out. I think the carving is about done. I am uh, I changed my mind on doing that curve in there because I decided to carve that out instead. I think it looks way, way better anyway. So that's looking pretty good. And this bevel, I carved all the way around the entire thing. I think that looks really, really good actually. Now that we're here, we're about finished with the wax carving. And if you were doing this wax carving on your own at this point, this is when you would, if you don't have the casting equipment, you could take it to a caster. So if you find a fine jeweler in your area, if he doesn't do the casting, you, usually they'll know somebody who does. So check that out. And this is a really great way of getting into jewelry making without really spending a whole lot. And it is so much fun carving. It's cool to see your ideas just come out of the wax like this. And all it really is is a little bit of time and effort. But since we're casting, it here I have to start thinking about sprueing this thing up so we're gonna look at it figure out where all the metal might flow into it best and then we'll start putting our sprue wax onto it and then getting it attached to our base let's get started with that we have our sprue wax with all the angles more or less cut the way we want them all I have to do now is glue them onto there and we'll do that with a wax pen So now our rings all sprued up onto our base and ready to be invested so we can make a casting of it. So the first thing we need to do is mix up our investment. So I have two pounds of investment and 364 milliliters of distilled water. Mix those together, vacuum them for a couple minutes and then pour it into our flask. And once it's in our flask, we'll vacuum it a second time and we'll let it sit for a couple hours. And then we'll be ready to put it into the oven. Okay, so it's been two hours and this thing is now dry and we can start pulling the tape off and getting the base off of it. Check that out, looks gorgeous. So now we'll go ahead and throw it in the oven and I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, good morning. It's been there a little over 12 hours now, so we're totally ready to cast. I've got all my silver weight out ready to go in the crucible. All we need to do is pull this guy out, throw it in our centrifugal caster, and then get going. And check it out, I even got my cell phone on there so I can film when it starts to spin and get some cool shots from the inside of the spin caster. Hopefully my phone survives. filled perfectly a really nice size button so we're doing really really well so now let's let it cool for just a second because it's such a big casting and then we'll quench it get it out of there hey hey looks really good all right filled nicely so our sprues that we decided to do worked out really really well all right we'll get the sprue cut off and get it cleaned up Here's a tool we're going to be using to clean up with today. First thing we have, a 
sanding drum. We're gonna be using this guy to clean all the insides up. It's a rough job, and then we'll go from that to this white wheel. Here's what they look like when they're new. And the white wheel's less rough than this, but still finer, so that's gonna clean up the scratches that that left behind. When we're done with that, we'll move finally to the gray wheel, which will remove the scratches of the white wheel, and then onto this buff. John from West Coast Finding sells all these also, so gray wheel, white wheel, knife edge, white wheel, gray wheel, and then he knows these as Shia LaBeoufs. You can thank Paul from Paul Bartnick Designs for the names. All right, so then once we have the inside of the band cleaned up, we'll move to the outside. We got some sanding sticks here. But before we do that, we'll cut the sprues off with just a regular old file. You can get it at any hardware store. Let's get to it. Okay, so check it out after it's been polished. Super nice looking. We could stop right here. Fits good, it looks really good. What I really wanna do, and that's why I didn't really worry about the fire scale. If you can see closely, there's a little bit of fire scale right there. Because the reason I'm not worrying about it is because I'm gonna cut this center area down and then do a little bit of a stempling finish and then antique it. And I'm not sure if I wanna antique the whole thing. Maybe I'll satin finish it though. See, the thing about a satin finish is you kinda wanna have a nice polished finish before you even satin it, just so it's nice and even. So I can go either way with that now. So that is what I'm doing. I still haven't quite fully decided on it, but it will reveal itself as we go. So let's set it up and get ready to start engraving. Okay, so we've taken our flat gravers and we've cut all this center stuff out. And so we've done it all the way around the entire band. And so now what we're gonna do is come in with just a sharp pointed stempling tool. And this is going to create the texture that we're looking for. And then we're gonna turn our graver max down from like 3300 down to like, I don't know, 1300 or so. Nice and slow. Let's get it going. Okay, so now we have our hot water, our liver of sulfur gel, put a couple drops of it in there, a little extra because there's a lot of water in there. All right, time to put our ring in there. Let it soak for 30 seconds to a minute, something like that. That's probably good. All right, so I think what we're gonna do from here is take sanding sticks and then just take the dark off of everything. Well, let's try some steel wool, see what that looks like. Sometimes this steel wool finish is like a flat, more of a satin finish. I kind of like that. Okay, I was not a fan of the antique inside this at all. So what I decided to do was to basically cut it all back out and start all over again without the antique. The one thing I did like a lot was that flat, more satin finish with the 4 out steel wool. So I just re 4 out steel wool the entire thing and cut all the stempling back out again so that way we can start over. So that's where we're at. I think the finish that I have on it now is the one we're gonna keep. Just the nice 4 out steel wool finish. And what I'm going to do now is re-stemple all this again, but just not antique it. And then I think we'll be finished. Okay, it's finally finished. Check it out. I am really, really glad I redid it because that antique was not the way to go. So cool. I think I actually wanna wear it on these two fingers though. Seems to work a lot better. I never thought I would really want a two finger ring, but now that I made it, I really like it. All 
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Thanks for watching all the way to the very end. Make sure you like this video if you liked it and consider subscribing. If this is your first video, keep watching. And if you've been here a while, let's make it official. Hit that subscribe button. Also, I hope you guys start getting into casting because making stuff like this is incredibly fun. It doesn't take a lot of investment and it's just time. So get yourself some wax carving tools and if you don't have casting equipment, which is obviously the most expensive part, find yourself a caster in your area and they can cast them for you and then get making awesome stuff. Also, I'm gonna be doing some videos coming up here on really low budget casting options for you guys. So keep an eye out for that and I will catch you in the next one.